the world moving away from the dollar. There is growing resentment with the way that the United States uses the privileged global reserve status of its currency within the international financial system as an instrument of its national policies. Because world currencies depend on the U.S. dollar as its reserve currency, no nation or organization is immune to this potential abuse. History has demonstrated that the U.S. has been wielding this economic weapon whenever needed and any time a nation declares that they will use another form of currency, the use of sanctions is quickly imposed upon that country, basically isolating it from conducting import and export trade with the rest of the world. Basically, it's a technique to economically starve out a country until they submit. It's the same as in medieval days when an invading force would come upon a castle that was so fortified they couldn't penetrate it. So the invading army would camp outside the walls and wait until the castle's food and supplies run out. Eventually, the castle opens its doors and the invading force takes the castle without incident. This is essentially the effect that sanctions have on nations today. Sanctions are the primary mechanism the U.S. uses to coerce the world to yield to their policies, and it has been very effective in the past. If a country other than the U.S. imposes sanctions, the extent of those sanctions are usually limited to the extent of the country that imposes them and perhaps some neighbor countries that might similarly be affected or may benefit. When the U.S. opposes sanctions, they can coerce the entire world to support their sanctions, or the threat of sanctions may be imposed upon them as well. And if sanctions aren't enough to create the leverage needed, there is always the imminent threat of military intervention. These two aspects of influence are what has kept the world in line with U.S. policies. That is, until now. This power of leverage is steadily weakening as the world becomes more aware that the U.S. dollar is no longer the juggernaut it once was. The dollar is sitting at a value of less than 3% today. It is no longer backed by any tangible asset. It went off the gold standard in 1972 and since has been backed by OPEC oil and the U.S. military might. Between the abuse of the reserve currency privilege and the inevitability of the dollar demise, the world has finally had enough and are banding together to create mechanisms to be able to conduct commerce and trade without the dollar and without the threat of sanctions being imposed on them. Another way the U.S. has created leverage is by their control of the SWIFT system. So what exactly is the SWIFT system? SWIFT stands for Society of Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunications. SWIFT is a cooperative society under Belgian law owned by its member financial institutions which has offices around the world and provides a network that enables more than 10,000 financial institutions worldwide in 212 different countries to send and receive information about financial transactions in a secure, standardized, and reliable environment. SWIFT has attracted controversy for enabling the U.S. government to monitor and in some cases to interfere with transactions. It is a common occurrence that any nation under American sanctions will be threatened with no longer having access to the SWIFT system. Basically, the U.S. and global elites can cut off any country's ability to move their money supply with the press of a button. And this has been going on since the SWIFT system was activated in Brussels in 1973. This kind of control can be applied to all levels of bank transactions, including individual accounts. So if you ever thought, even for a moment, that your wealth placed within the banking or financial institutions ever belonged to you, or that you had any control over it, please be aware that that has never been the case. The government at any moment can freeze your wealth. They do it all the time to anyone they deem as criminals of the state. They have achieved this control through a program called the Terrorist Finance Tracking Program, which the U.S. Treasury Department, Central Intelligence Agency, 
and other United States governmental agencies initiated after the 11 September attacks to gain access to the SWIFT transaction database. SWIFT was named as a target according to documents leaked by Edward Snowden. The National Security Agency widely monitors banking transactions via SWIFT as well as credit card transactions. They intercept and retain data from the SWIFT network used by thousands of banks. As recent as 2017, a group known as the Shadow Brokers released files allegedly from the NSA which indicate that the agency was continuing to routinely monitor financial transactions made through SWIFT. There are already lots of people trying to do something about the dominance of the dollar. Uh, as you know, uh, if the U.S. gets upset with you, they slap you. They just stop you using the U.S. dollar, or they stop you trading the U.S. dollar, which pe many people say, wait a minute, this is supposed to be the international currency. That's not an international currency if it can be stopped by one nation. Currently, 23 countries, 60% of the world's GDP, are setting up swap lines which bypass the dollar and SWIFT system. But when these tactics aren't effective enough, the U.S. has another resource at its disposal, the might of its military and the influence over NATO forces. Here are some recent examples of countries that threatened the U.S. dollar but could not be effectively sanctioned and therefore military might was employed to achieve the desired result. Iraq In October of 2000, Iraq insisted on dumping the U.S. dollar for the more multilateral euro. In May of 2003, Iraq was invaded. Libya Libya is Africa's largest oil producer. In 2009, Libya's Muammar Gaddafi had proposed the adoption of a gold-backed dinar. He amassed 143 tons of sovereign gold and the same amount in silver to back this newly proposed Pan-African currency. Gaddafi's plan was to quit selling Libya oil in U.S. dollars, demanding payment instead in these gold-backed dinars. In February of 2011, the United Nations Security Council froze the assets of Gaddafi and his inner circle and restricted their travel. They established a no-fly zone over Libya, which turned into a bombing campaign by NATO forces. By August of 2011, the capital city of Tripoli was captured, and Muammar Gaddafi was brutally killed in the streets of Sirte on 20 October 2011. Within weeks, Libya's sovereign bank was removed, and a Rothschild central bank was put in its place. To this day, no one can account for the 143 tons of gold and the same amount of silver that Gaddafi had amassed. It just conveniently vanished, as these things do during military conflict. It was never used to benefit the Libyan people or used to create the gold-backed dinar that would have allowed the Pan-African nations to break the bonds of the Western central bank system. Syria. In 2006, just prior to Syrian's president Bashar al-Assad being labeled by U.S. officials as a genocidal war criminal who needed to step down, the Chicago Tribune reported Syria has switched the primary hard currency it uses for foreign goods and services from the U.S. dollar to the euro in a bid to make it less vulnerable to the pressures from Washington. Due to ongoing international pressure and sanctions, Syria has been making business arrangements with nearly all of America's foes and major competitors. Countries like Cuba, Venezuela, Argentina, Iran, Russia, and China. Iran. The seeds, and I'm not naive to believe that this, will, this tree will grow tomorrow, but the seeds of moving away from U.S. dollar are being sowed. And I think U.S. pressure is the fertilizer. On March 21, 2017, the Islamic Republic of Iran stopped using the dollar in all of its financial reporting. The governor of the sovereign Central Bank of Iran was quoted by domestic media as saying that Iran would either replace the U.S. dollar with a common foreign currency or use a basket of currencies in all official financial and foreign exchange reports. The United States is already preparing for potential conflict with Iran. 
the U.S. has introduced H.J. Resolution 10, Authorization of Use of Force Against Iran Resolution. This resolution was quietly introduced with absolutely no media attention in spite of the fact that it authorized the president to use the U.S. armed forces as necessary in order to prevent Iran from obtaining nuclear weapons. One of the ways nations have found that they can circumvent the failing reserve dollar currency is to band together to develop trading alliances outside of the traditional markets and SWIFT system. One such alliance is known as BRICS. BRICS stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, the five nations which represent over one quarter of the world's land and are home to nearly three billion people, about 40% of the world's population, with a combined GDP of $20 trillion. There have also been recent discussions about adding Indonesia to this organization. Economist Jim O'Neill, chairman of Goldman Sachs Asset Management, theorized that India and China will grow to become the world's leading suppliers of manufactured goods and services, and Brazil and Russia will become dominant as raw material suppliers. In addition, O'Neill surmised that by 2050, the combined economies of BRIC would surpass those of the world's current wealthiest countries. These five major emerging economies are developing a joint new payment system called BRICS Pay as part of the drive to establish a common system for retail payments and transactions between the member countries. The BRICS plan is to use their own currencies when trading with each other and not the US dollar. These BRIC nations are among the world's leading and most powerful emerging markets and plan to introduce a special cloud platform which will connect their national payment systems to online wallets that will access this payment system and which can be installed on smartphones and used for purchases in any of the five BRICS countries regardless of which currency the payment and the money in the account of the buyer are denominated in. This means that the nations of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa will be able to use their own national currencies as a direct basis of exchange for external payments. This is being seen as a major step on the path to de-dollarize and a decoupling from the U.S.-controlled global banking system. The BRICS nations have also been examining the possibility of developing a BRICS cryptocurrency. A growing number of nations have or are considering a shift away from the dollar to preserve their assets. The European Union is considering switching payments from the US dollar to the euro after Washington threatened to target European firms working in Iran, according to reports. Saudi Arabia The Telegraph reports that for the first time Saudi Arabia has refused to cut interest rates along with the US Federal Reserve. This is seen as a signal that a break from the dollar currency peg is imminent. Experts fear that the break from the dollar in Saudi Arabia could set off a stampede from the dollar in the Middle East. The Saudi Kingdom is hedging towards a new global system and has publicly stated that their ties to the U.S. are open for renegotiation. They are ready to accept the yuan and other national currencies for the settlement of oil purchases. Saudi Arabia is likely to abandon the petrodollar and begin dealings with China. South Korea In 2005, South Korea announced its intention to shift its investments to currencies of countries other than the U.S. China As of 2005, the yuan was no longer pegged to the U.S. dollar. Its value is floated against a basket of currencies. This was the first step in getting the yuan accepted into the IMF basket of currencies. China recently dropped 6 billion of US debt. China also set up a petro yuan exchange, which challenges the petrodollar system, which currently forces every country in the world to buy OPEC oil with only US dollars. The petro yuan system would allow international buyers of oil to pay in gold and yuan. In June of 2017, the European Central Banks for the first time switched 500 million euros of its foreign exchange reserves from US dollars to yuan. 
according to the International Monetary Fund, during the third quarter of 2018, holdings of yuan assets by global central banks increased to $192 billion. China has a banking payment system known as Union Pay and has already issued over 6 billion national cards. Brazil has shown interest in collaborating in non-dollar oil payments. Brazil's banking system alternative to the SWIFT system is called ELO and has issued 120 million cards. United Arab Emirates United Arab Emirates and China have agreed to use their own currencies in bilateral trade. Turkey Ankara's purchase of the Russian S-400 anti-aircraft missile system, which Washington says is incompatible with NATO defenses and threatens its Lockheed Martin F-35 fighter jets, has threatened to place stern sanctions on Turkey. Despite threats of U.S. sanctions, Turkey started receiving its first S-400 deliveries in July. Turkey further dumped 12% of U.S. debt holdings and repatriated 220 tons of gold, 28 tons of which came from the U.S. Federal Reserve. India India joined the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. India has agreed to use gold to buy oil from Iran. India has created their own substitute for the American SWIFT system called the Rupay Payment System and has already issued 500 million national cards, allowing commerce and banking to be conducted outside of the U.S. dollar. Venezuela Venezuela holds little loyalty to the dollar. The Venezuela National Exchange is no longer denominated in dollars. Instead, it is denominated in euro and yuan. They also created a cryptocurrency called the Petro, which will serve as an alternative means of payment for Venezuela internationally. If nations are interested in buying Venezuela's gold, oil, or other commodities, they can do so by bypassing the SWIFT system, which has been denied to Venezuela by U.S. sanctions. They have announced that they are ready to accept yuan and other national currencies for the settlement of oil purchases. Japan the second largest U.S. debt holder has dumped $5 billion of that debt. Japan recently agreed to a $200 billion currency swap with the yuan, demonstrating that Japan clearly thinks the yuan is going to be the best stable currency for their nation instead of the dollar in the future. Japan and China have agreements to use their own currencies in bilateral trade. Sudan Sudan is once again planning to convert its dollar holdings to the euro and other currencies. Additionally, they've recommended to commercial banks, government departments, and private businesses to do the same. 31 Sudanese companies have become subject to sanctions, preventing them from doing trade or financial transactions with the U.S. Iran Iran is historically one of the most sanctioned countries in the world, all driven by the U.S. through NATO. Iran took the dollar off their foreign and financial exchanges, and they are seeking gold as a payment for trade. They are ready to accept yuan and other national currencies for settlement of oil purchases. Recently, Iran requested that its shipments to Japan be traded for yen instead of dollars. Iran has plans in the works to create an open commodity exchange called the Iran Oil Bourse. This exchange would make it possible to trade oil and gas in non-dollar currencies. On February 1st, Germany, France, and Britain launched an EU-backed payment system to help businesses circumvent unilateral U.S. sanctions against Iran. Named the Instrument for Supporting Trade Exchanges, it is designed to act as a kind of euro-denominated clearinghouse for trade with Tehran. Russia In 2005, Russia put an end to its dollar peg, opting instead to move towards a euro alignment. In 2006, Russian President Vladimir Putin expressed interest in establishing a Russian stock exchange which would allow oil, gas, and other goods to be paid for in rubles. 
Russia's intentions are no secret. In the past, they've made it clear that they are wary of holding too many dollar reserves. We will definitely be moving in this direction, towards independence from the U.S. dollar. Not because we want to undermine the dollar, but because we want to ensure our own security, because we have sanctions imposed on us. They don't let us work with the dollar. They've discussed pricing oil in euros, a move that could provide a large shift away from the dollar and towards the euro, as Russia is the world's second largest oil exporter. Since 2014, Russia has been the target of very aggressive sanctions in order to sway them in line with U.S. policies, and Russia feels that future sanctions for noncompliance may result in them being cut off from the international financial system. People are already, you know, the Chinese, the Russians, and the Brazilians, and other people are coming up with an alternative currency and an alternative banking system to the IMF and the, to the World Bank and to the clearing system. So there's already a movement afoot to eliminate the, the dominance of the U.S. dollar. Russia and China are starting to do the same sorts of things, which would have been impossible. They wouldn't have even known how. 20 years ago, but now they're figuring it out and they're doing it. So they are stacking gold and have created their own payment system that will function outside of the central banks and U.S. controlled SWIFT system. Russia recently dumped 84 percent of their U.S. debt holdings. Why hold the debt of a country that is leveraging you with international sanctions? One of the elements that keep the dollar strong is the foreign purchase of U.S. treasuries and securities, otherwise known as U.S. debt. It is a U.S. IOU to these countries, and they are systematically calling in these IOUs, reducing the overall strength of the U.S. dollar and consequently the U.S. economy. It was reported in January that during the second quarter of 2018, the Bank of Russia twice reduced the amount of its foreign exchange held in U.S. dollars and moved the equivalent of $44 billion into euros and yuan, with another $21 billion invested in Japanese yen. In May, Beijing and Moscow signed a huge multi-decade gas supply contract to sit alongside a similar oil deal agreed in 2009. Russia's present gold reserve would back 27% of the ruble money supply. That is a high ratio, far in excess of any other major country and also in excess of the U.S. Fed's original stipulated gold coverage minimum. Russia and China have also agreed to use their own currencies in bilateral trade. In order to circumvent the control mechanisms of the SWIFT payment system, Russia has created their own national payment system established by the state-controlled Central Bank of Russia. It's called the MIR payment system. At the end of 2015, the Russian Central Bank officially announced China's currency, the Yuan, as a reserve currency. It is gradually gaining acceptance among foreign companies with Russian operations and is used by almost 400 banks and has issued about 50 million cards. Vietnam has agreed to accept payments using Russia's MIR card. Thailand is in talks about using the MIR payment card with their banks. The MIR system has been in development since 2014 after the United States government threatened to disconnect Russia from the SWIFT system. The system was activated in 2016 as a way to overcome potential blocks of electronic payments after several Russian banks were denied services by U.S.-based Visa and MasterCard because of the sanctions regime against them. Many ordinary Russian citizens found themselves unable to access cash via their Visa and MasterCards. The United States had switched them off the global payment network. Similar situations have also occurred in Turkey and more recently in Iran. The mere structure is proof that Russia has removed the Rothschilds' presence from Russia. It is speculated that many more nations will continue to choose payment systems other than the U.S.-controlled SWIFT system, only further removing the leverage the U.S. has enjoyed over the economic world for so long. Gulf Region Nations 
Along with China, Russia, Japan, and France, there is a plan to end dollar dealings for oil, moving instead to a basket of currencies, including the Japanese yen, the Chinese yuan, the euro, gold, and a new unified currency planned for nations in the Gulf Cooperation Council, including Saudi Arabia, Abu Dhabi, Kuwait, and Qatar. Secret meetings have already been held by finance ministers and central bank governors in Russia, China, Japan, and Brazil to work on the plan, which will mean that soon oil will no longer be priced in dollars. By 2017, Russia replaced Saudi Arabia as the world's major oil producer, with China importing more oil than anyone else. The characters in the oil game have changed, and the new players want to back the price of oil with the yuan. The Chinese and Russians have been buying physical gold for several years and intend to use it to back the yuan. The days of the dollar supremacy may be at an end as the power and price of gold continues to rise. Other countries are now faced with the decision of how to maintain their economic sovereignty. They each have to decide what they will use to back their currency once the dollar can no longer be relied upon. Will it be gold, oil, or some other tangible commodity? One thing is for sure that soon no nation will want to back their currency with an economy that is $123 trillion in debt and projected to add $1 trillion of debt each year. As the most powerful nations in the world have demonstrated, gold is becoming more important globally than ever. Awareness is the key. Whatever an individual decides to do to economically survive should be based on informed decisions. I hope that this content can help to that end. I'd like to know if you found this information informative or useful. Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you to all who support this channel, especially to those who take the time to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I don't monetize my channel, so your likes, comments, shares, and subscriptions really help the channel to grow and be seen by others. If you are not yet a subscriber, hit the subscribe button, then be sure to select the notification bell to be notified as soon as I post up new content. And always feel free to share this content with all.